After reincarnation, he unlocks a skill maxing system, which automatically increases the level of any skill to the maximum. During graduation ceremony, he unfortunately unlocks a normal mage class, and feels depressed. But after seeing the skill maxing system, increasing the skills level to max, the intro concludes and a story continuous like this. Also, help us reach 100 likes and let's begin. Two girls admire a guy, one applauds him as the college genius for his mastery of spy programs, while the other admires his good looks and ponders where he'll transition to a prestigious job role. Confidently, the other girl believes he will surely transition to a more prestigious job class, and she plans to reveal her feelings to him once he achieves that milestone. Over a hundred years ago, the world was terrorized by invading games. Various monsters emerged prompting people to awaken different skills. Humans were relegated to constantly switching stations, battling monsters, and leveling up for survival. Failing to keep pace with the monsters resulted in certain death. In such dire times, geniuses garnered attention as their abilities determined humanity's fate. 18-year-old Jian Li, a talented individual who crossed worlds, has been learning various abilities. With the singular goal of becoming the strongest, Jian Li excels in every field, confident that his talents will unlock a hidden class job. Jobs are categorized into basic, advanced, and hidden, with increasing difficulty and advancement. However, unlocking overwhelming power is akin to finding a needle in a haystack. The college principal believes in Jian Li's boundless future, affirming that he is never wrong. But naturally, being a genius always attracts jealousy and dissatisfaction from others. Approaching Jian Li, a guy confirms his identity as the highly anticipated genius. Yan Xiao, accompanied by his two sidekicks, confronts Jian Li, asking him if he is the highly anticipated genius. He inquires about which advanced job class Jiang is planning to awaken. Recognizing Yan Xiao from the Golden Domain Academy, Jiang Li recalls him as one of the three geniuses, with a powerful Golden Class practitioner father. Jiang Li casually responds to Yan Xiao's query, admitting uncertainty about his future awakening as he nonchalantly walks past him. Yan Xiao interrupts Jiang Li, cautioning him against arrogance, lest he awaken an undesirable job class, warning of potential loss of respect. Defiantly, Jiang Li commands Yan Xiao to release him. Intimidated by Zhang's gaze, Yan Xiao quickly withdraws his hand from Zhang's shoulder, walking away with hands in his pockets. Jiang contemplates being the day's center of attention, aware that a failed awakening would be deeply embarrassing. A failed genius risks becoming a perpetual object of ridicule. The awakening process begins, with Zhang Danyu from class 1 being the first to awaken and fail. The overseer consoles Zhang Danyu, advising those with ordinary awakenings not to lose hope and to persevere, emphasizing everyone's potential before calling the next student. Everyone's attention is captivated by the next awakening. It's Li Muin who astonishes everyone by awakening as a swift archer. Recognized as a genius from the Golden Domain Academy, Li Muin captures everyone's attention. The next person also successfully awakens to an advanced job class following a huge flash of lights. Yan Xiao, now an advanced class flame mage, expresses dissatisfaction, dismissing it as merely advanced. Spectators marvel at the consecutive advanced classes, noting that even stronger candidates are yet to awaken, while Yan Xiao arrogantly dismisses their admiration as mere foolishness, saying it's just an advanced job class with contempt. Yan Xiao berates Jiang Li, stating that talent is something you're born with and he mocks Jiang Li's efforts as useless. It's Jiang Li's turn for his awakening. The professors, realizing it's Jiang's turn, acknowledge his top grades and exceptionalism. Jiang's awakening commences, marked by a bizarre uproar of blinding light. The principal is shocked by the prolonged commotion during Jiang's awakening. Speculating on the outcome, he wonders if Jiang will achieve a unique hidden job class. After the process concludes, Jiang is awakened to a basic job class as a mage. Unable to comprehend, one professor questions Jiang's unexpected result while another is visibly shaken. Yin Xiao mocks Zhang's awakening, claiming his own flame mage status is superior. Surrounding Li Muin, students praise her as the real deal, doubting Zhang's supposed genius. Speechless, Jiang faces whispers of disappointment and suspicion. Centered amidst the tension, Jiang stands as people react with embarrassment and disbelief to his outcome. Jiang Li questions the reality of his situation, pondering if this is all there is to his awakening. His focus shifts to the system's congratulatory message, revealing a special talent with skills automatically maxed out. Surprised by the revelation, he wonders if it's linked to his world-crossing experience. Examining his skills displayed by the system, he notices they aren't initially at maximum levels. Suddenly, 
Jiang Li witnesses a strange phenomenon as his skills rapidly escalate in levels. He watches all his skills skyrocket in proficiency, wondering what is happening. He recalls what his principal had said about awakening, that after awakening, each profession comes with three level 1 skills which can be leveled up, increasing their strength, and that leveling up is extremely difficult. With a cunning smile, he remarks that reaching the maximum level of skills turned out to be surprisingly simple. He feels fate hasn't abandoned him and asserts that the max level perk is even better than a hidden job class. The principal shakes Jiang Li by the shoulders, urging him not to be discouraged for not attaining a higher class, reminding him of the endless possibilities as a practitioner, and reassuring him of the teacher's faith in him. Grateful, Jiang Li thanks the principal and pledges to continue working hard, offering a smile of determination. The principal's reassuring pat prompts Jiang to return to class with a forced cheer. Amidst laughter and jeers from others, Jiang realizes the harshness of reality, where people prefer watching a genius fail. Smirking, he contemplates his hidden power considering the possibility of surprising them all by succeeding. At the trial shooting range, students practice aiming at targets to improve their skills. Yen Su impresses his peers by blasting targets with fire from his fingers. His companions cheer, praising his remarkable abilities, while Yen Su basks in pride. Spotting Jiang returning to class, Yen Su calls out to him, referring to him as an ordinary mage. Yen Su attempts to grab Jiang's attention by shooting a flame in his direction. Irritated, Jiang turns to face Yen Su, questioning his intentions. Yen Su challenges Jiang to showcase his skills, daring him to compete against an advanced flame mage. Jiang dismisses the invitation, asserting his existing skills and declining the need for practice. Growing frustrated, Yen Su insists Jiang is not being asked to practice but to display his talents. Challenging Jiang's courage, Yen Su questions if he dares to compete against an advanced mage. Yen Su mocks Jiang by poking his head, calling him a coward. Jiang swiftly gestures with his right hand, unleashing large fireballs with a snap. Laughing, Yen Su belittles the spell as basic and questions Jiang's seriousness. To Yen Su's surprise, the fireballs hit the target, causing a huge explosion. Startled, Yen Su turns back in disbelief. Flames engulf the surroundings. Multiple targets are consumed by the fire. Yen Su exclaims in disbelief, insisting it can't be happening. As Jiang walks away, Yen Su shouts, questioning how Jiang, a basic mage, could wield such powerful fireball spells. Jiang Li walks into his house, admitting that while the power of the fireball at full level is great, it used up half his mana and thinks he has to quickly level up and increase his max mana. A voice asks him why he came back to the house without saying a word. It's his mom, who tells him to wash his hands and get ready to eat. At the dining table, Jiang tells his mom that he successfully awakened and he is a mage. His mom, looking happy, says that's great and advises him to use his skills from the back row in his team, relatively safer than the front row. She gets up, saying she has something for him. She brings a box and tells Jiang that it's from his father and that back then, he was also a powerful professional. Shocked at hearing this, Jiang asks hadn't she told him his father died long before he was born. He asks her where his father went, being such a powerful professional, and why he has ignored them for so many years. His mom says she doesn't know either and that his dad had only said he was going to the edge of the world, as there are important matters to attend to and he had left in a hurry. She tells Jiang not to blame his father and that he promised to make him a mage, which was the reason she had always emphasized his studies and mage skills. She acknowledges that now he has grown up and become a mage, with tears in her eyes. Turning away from Jiang and wiping her tears, she tells him that she is tired and suggests he go back to his room and rest first after checking the box. Jiang stares at the box and opens it. A bright light fills the room upon being opened and Jiang's expression turns to astonishment as he sees what is in the box. The item inside the box is a professional change scroll, enabling one to transition their profession to a powerful arcanist, contingent upon reaching gold level or above in mage class profession strength. Professions are divided into various ranks, allowing individuals to advance to the next rank upon meeting specific conditions. Jiang's father excelled as one of the top professionals in the gold level. Jiang raises the scroll, contemplating his father's rank, whether in the holy domain or demigod tiers and pondering the mystery of his absence for so many years. He returns the scroll to the box, determined to level up and reach gold-level professional status before the trial in Jean City begins in seven days, emphasizing the need for advanced preparation. A proud-looking guy disapproves and says that another ignorant kid, without knowing the height of the sky and the thickness of the earth, who has just awakened, is rushing to the wilderness to court death. Another guy suggests that maybe the kid has a powerful special profession. The proud-looking one calls the other blind and tells him to have a look at the kid who is Jiangli, and seeing how skinny he is, what else can he be beside a mage? Someone grabs Jiangli's shoulder from behind, calling him little brother. It's a girl who asks Jiang if he must be a newly awakened student judging by his aura and offers him to join her group. One member of their group states they have pressing matters and cannot accommodate Jiang, 
while another agrees and hints that Vivi's kindness might be excessive. Disappointed at their takes, Vivi asks the two guys why they are like that as Jian smiles and says it's okay. He thanks Vivi for her kindness and waves her goodbye, saying he will be fine on his own. Vivi asks him to wait a moment. She hands him a potion, saying since he is a mage, he should find it useful later. Accepting the potion, Jiang thanks her. Vivi tells Jiang to take care of himself, smiling. At the Grey Forest, a level 4 big brother goblin stands his ground, a big club on his shoulder. Jiang has his eyes on that goblin as he hides behind a tree. He snaps his fingers, flames erupting above his fingers, which turn into a fireball that he shoots at the goblin. Taken by surprise, the goblin is unable to dodge and gets hit by the fireball, causing a huge explosion. The goblin is instantly defeated and Jiang walks towards it, acknowledging the max level fireball for taking care of the level 4 goblin in an instant. Jiang senses something behind him and turns around. There is a horde of goblins, one of them up on a tree branch with a shiny sword in his hands, and Jiang questions them if they were attracted by the commotion he caused. All of the goblins laugh at him, and he raises both his hands and prepares to fight them all, saying it's good they all came to him and it will save him time as he won't have to search for them one by one. He uses a light armor spell. A shield surrounds his body, rendering a goblin's attack useless. The goblins strike the shield, trying to get through it, but a max level light armor spell isn't easily broken through. The fireball spell is ready again, and Jiang summons to use it. He shoots the fireball at the goblins, resulting in a massive explosion. The fireball defeats all of the goblins at once. Jiang smiles and remarks that it's like using a sledgehammer to crack a nut as the system notifies him of leveling up by one level. More goblins appear and surround him. With a smirk, Jiang says no matter how many of them come, the result will always be the same. He snaps his fingers to summon the fireball again, but nothing happens, leaving him bewildered. Checking his mana, he's shocked to find he can only cast two fireball spells and one light armor spell despite leveling up. He sees that the shield from the light armor spell is still half full, so he decides to replenish his mana with meditation after he finishes the goblins first. He picks up one of the goblins' clubs and says the goblins won't be able to get through his defense, so he will play with them. He raises the club as the goblins charge at him, and saying he will show the goblins the power of a melee mage, he strikes the club on one of a goblin's head. The attack only does minus 10 damage, and looking worried, Jiang understands he does low damage as a melee mage. With confidence, he says 10. Damage points is enough and charges back at the goblins, stating they can't do anything to him anyway. As night falls, Jiang wipes sweat off his face, looking tired after finally managing to defeat all of the goblins, remarking on his low physical damage, while the system informs him he has leveled up by one level. He realizes he's limited to two fireball spells due to mana constraints, requiring him to use the light armor spell for safety during its cooldown, slowing his efficiency. The silence of the night is broken by a loud noise, which startles Jiang. He wonders who could have made that sound. An elite monster appears. Jiang thinks eliminating an elite monster in the early stage should provide a lot of experience and says it's perfect timing for its arrival. He raises his fists and tries to use the light armor spell, smiling. The shield doesn't appear leaving him and the elite monster confused. With empty mana and a level 10 giant axe goblin looming over him, he groans, oh no, sensing imminent danger. The elite goblin raises his axe, ready to strike Jiang. It brings the axe down with a powerful blow as Jiang barely manages to jump out of its way, leaving a huge dent in the ground. Looking worried, Jiang admits the current situation will be a problem for him. A level 1 goblin strikes Jiang from behind catching him off guard. Jiang realizes he almost forgot about the smaller monsters. Jiang states the monsters are bullying him because he is out of mana. He reassures himself to remain calm, considering three ways to deal with the current situation, the first being to find an opportunity for him to use meditation to restore his mana. The small goblin throws a stone at Jiang, who steps aside to avoid it, realizing he has no chance to focus on his meditation in his current situation. He takes out the potion given to him by that girl before, thinking the second option is to drink it as it will restore less than one third of his mana, which will be enough to use the light armor. The third option is to retreat and recover before coming back to fight again. However, running away isn't his style. Knowing natural mana recovery would take 24 hours, by which time someone might defeat the elite monster. Jiang decides to drink the potion. He opens the cork of the potion and drinks it. The giant goblin raises its axe, ready to strike Jiang. Jiang activates the light armor just in time, creating a shield that deflects the axe. Wondering how much mana he can restore with max level meditation before the shield breaks, Jiang prepares to gamble. Ready to meditate, Jiang braces for the risk. Seated on the ground, Jiang begins to meditate, protected by the light armor. Despite repeated strikes from the elite goblin, the shield remains unbroken as Jiang continues meditating safely within. The goblin's axe shatters the shield with another strike, opening his mana glowing eyes. 
Jiang declares it's enough. He questions if the goblin is growing tired as he snaps his fingers. A giant fireball materializes, striking the goblin. The resulting explosion sends all the goblins flying with tremendous force. The system message confirms Jiang's successful attack on a weak point, dealing a critical hit. While Jiang kneels on the ground, exhausted, wiping sweat from his face, Jiang acknowledges the close call and praises the power of max level meditation. Excitedly, his level increases by four, exhilarated by the significant boost from defeating the elite monster. Checking for loot after the battle, Jiang discovers two pieces of black iron equipment, a pair of swift gloves and exquisite leather boots. Reflecting on his combat strength, Jiang realizes the need to either defeat monsters swiftly or face the risk of being killed in one blow. Despite finding the beginner's equipment ugly and seemingly insignificant, Jiang decides to keep them for future sale. Assessing his current mana capacity, Jiang acknowledges the risk involved in gathering monsters for efficient combat compared to grinding them individually. He wishes he had other low-cost wide-range attack spells. He notices a spellbook and gets excited upon seeing it. Holding the spellbook with twinkling eyes, Jiang learns that even novice classes can utilize its contents. He opens the spellbook, bolts of lightning crackling from its pages, intriguing Jiang. Recognizing the spell as Arc Lightning, Jian realizes it's an area of effect skill. With a content smile, Jian notes its scalability and control effect, eagerly anticipating trying it out. Unaware goblins mind their own business nearby. Suddenly, flashes of lightning zap the goblins, leaving them confused. The goblins look around in bewilderment, casting the spell. Jian marvels that one shot isn't enough. He unleashes another wave of lightning. The goblins are electrocuted once more. As the defeated goblins fall, Jiang acknowledges that the damage isn't as high as a fireball, but the mana cost of four arc lightnings equals one fireball, with faster casting and cooldown times, and no need to gather monsters in one place. Realizing it's the exact spell he needed, Jiang now has a means to deal with small monsters effectively. Excitedly, he selects the area boss of the Grey Forest as his next target, reasoning that if one elite monster can yield significant experience and rewards, the area boss must offer even greater rewards. Prior to heading to the boss area, he decides to replenish his mana first. Jiang spots a group of sleeping goblins, speculating it's the goblin tribe's dwelling and assumes the area boss must be nearby. He surmises they must be in slumber. Proceeding cautiously, he searches for the boss among the sleeping goblins, planning to attack with fireballs. Accidentally stepping on a twig, it snaps loudly, alarming Jiang as he realizes his mistake. A goblin stirs, rubbing its eyes awake. Acting swiftly, Jiang strikes the goblin on the head with a large stick. Despite the blow, the goblin remains resilient, roaring in pain and anger. The commotion wakes all the other goblins. Jiang flees, pleading with the goblins to cease pursuit, apologizing and explaining his need for full mana to face the boss. In retaliation, one of the goblins hurls a stone at Jiang, striking him on the head. Growing angry at the goblins, Jiang confronts them, readying his spell for battle. He hurls bolts of lightning at the goblins, electrocuting them and reducing their health by half. Another round of lightning spells defeats all the goblins, leaving them defeated as Jiang questions their aggression. Unable to spot the boss among the tribe, Jiang considers if it's not in the tribe. Suddenly, the ground begins to shake, fissures appearing beneath Jiang's feet. Jiang suspects an earthquake is occurring. Startled, Jiang notices a statue resembling an elderly goblin behind him glowing, leaving him bewildered. Meanwhile, three individuals walk through the forest, with one expressing concern about practicing in the forest at night, likening it to seeking death. Yen Quan, Yen Xiao's uncle, chuckles, eager to seize the opportunity to defeat Jiang Li and impress his cousin. The blonde companion reminds Yen Quan of the late hour, questioning if Jiang Li might still in the forest. Yen shoots a deadly glare at the blonde, questioning his trust. The blonde quickly clarifies that he doesn't doubt Yen but rather expresses concern about the dangers of being in the wilderness at night, especially in encountering elite monsters or bosses they can't handle. The ground suddenly begins to shake, recognizing the tremors as a response to someone triggering the area boss. Yen Quan expresses surprise. He informs the others that the area boss, the goblin shaman, has been activated and suggests they let whoever triggered it handle the fight initially, planning to join in later. Jiang Li identifies the area boss of the Greywood Forest, noting its momentum is not as formidable as previous elite monsters. Jiang Li finds himself face to face with the area boss, a level 20 goblin shaman. Holding a staff in one hand, the goblin shaman conjures crystal-like objects in the other, activating his fireball spell. Jiang Li questions if the boss is also a mage. Criticizing the boss's slow casting speed, Jiang Li hurls a fireball at it. The fireball explodes on the boss, yielding a successful hit on a weak point 
confirmed by the system as a critical strike. In retaliation, the boss launches ice crystals at Jiangli, who nervously anticipates the complexity of the battle. Struck by the ice crystals, Jiangli is shocked by the high damage inflicted upon him. Utilizing its cloak, the boss shields itself from Jiangli's fireball attack. It looks around, unable to spot Jiangli. While the boss wasn't paying attention to Jiang, he had successfully managed to hide behind a tree. The boss produces more crystals, knocking down a tree as it shoots them, trying to find Jiang. Jiangli, hidden behind one of the trees, recognizes the boss's cloak can resist his flame's attacks, thinking it must have magic resistance. With his mana running low, Jiangli realizes he can't sustain the fight with such depleted resources. He decides to meditate and replenish his mana before the boss spots him. The boss continues to use the crystal to chop down trees in all directions, searching for Jiangli. After felling numerous trees, the boss turns towards the one behind which Jiang is hiding. Summoning another crystal, it shoots it at Jiang's hiding spot, chopping down the tree. Jiangli, interrupted from his meditation, opens his eyes and realizes he's been discovered. The boss laughs menacingly as it begins creating more crystals. The boss holds his staff up, numerous crystals ready to attack Jiang, as Jiang says it's bad. Jiang, feeling anxious about his dwindling mana reserves, worries he may not have enough to unleash a fireball. Unable to conjure the fireball, he resorts to unleashing a wave of lightning, stating it's all he can manage for now. The lightning strikes the boss and the crystals it produced. The crystals shatter, and the boss shouts in frustration as it gets electrocuted. Shaken by the lightning attack, the boss falls to one knee. Recognizing the paralyzing effect of the full-level attack, Jiang sees it as a prime opportunity and rushes toward the boss. He swiftly removes the boss's cloak, stating it won't be able to resist his spells without it. Holding the boss's cloak, Jiang challenges it, declaring it's his turn to prevail. Using his staff for support, the boss struggles to stand back up. Searching around, the boss attempts to locate Jiang Li. Spotting what he believes to be Jiang Li hiding behind a fallen tree in front of him, the boss decides to attack. Creating more crystals, he launches them towards the suspected hiding spot. The crystals obliterate trees and trigger a massive explosion nearby. Confident he's finally found Jiang Li, the boss smiles. His smile turns to horror as he realizes Jiang Li isn't there. The boss frantically scans the area, demanding to know Jiang Li's whereabouts. Emerging from behind, Jiang Li prepares his fireball spell, declaring the boss's demise. Jiang Li hurls the fireball, but the boss quickly erects a shield from his staff to block the attack. Despite the shield's defense, the fireball cracks through and strikes the boss. Another explosion erupts as the system notifies Jiang Li of a successful critical hit on the weak point. With the boss incapacitated on the ground, Jiang Li explains that despite its strong defenses, his max level fireball skill is potent, and without fire resistance, the boss is doomed. Approaching the fallen boss with a club in hand, Jiang Li remarks on the boss's unfortunate encounter with him. Delivering a final blow with the club, Jiang Li ends the boss's reign, earning a 3 level increase and reaching level 10, as confirmed by the system. Examining the loot from the boss's defeat, Jiang Li deems it satisfactory and believes he can make use of it. Holding up the boss's cloak, Jiang Li discovers it's a fire resistant robe in tatters, rendering it useless. Opening the new spell book obtained, Jiang Li learns Ice Arrow, now at max level, previously level 5. With a satisfied expression, Jiang Li marvels at the power of the max level Ice Arrow, anticipating its effects. Inspecting the staff, Jiang Li identifies it as a bronze level staff with magic penetration theorizing it may explain why the max level light armor was weak and plans to utilize it against magic resistant monsters. Startled by a voice from behind, Jiang Li is ordered not to move and to raise his hands. The figures emerge as Yan Quan and the blonde guy, with the latter suggesting that Jiang Li's team must have perished as he is alone. Yan Quan, addressing Jiang Li, acknowledges his defeat of the area boss and expresses regret for Jiang abandoning his team, assuming they were more powerful. With his hands raised, Jiang Li questions how Yan knows his name. Yan Quan introduces himself and accuses Jiang of bullying his cousin in school, questioning Jiang's intentions toward the Yan family. Jiang Li denies any bullying and offers Yan Quan items in a gesture of friendship. Rejecting the offer, Yan asserts they can't be friends and threatens Jiang Li with violence, offering him a choice between his hand or leg. Jiang Li rebuffs the notion of violence, stating they've just met and shouldn't talk about fighting or killing. The guy in glasses notices Jiang's meditation and warns Yan Quan of Jiang's mana recovery. Yan Quan dismisses Jiang's potential recovery, claiming their advanced professions make them superior. Jiang Li, smiling, acknowledges their advanced status and remarks positively on it. Yan Quan challenges Jiang Li to a fight to the death, warning him they won't even allow him a chance to cast a spell. Without uttering a word, Jiang Li unleashes his spell, instantly electrocuting all three of them, his hands still raised in surrender. 
Yan Quan crashes to the ground, electrocuted. Jiang clenches his fists, admonishing Yan for talking too much and allowing him the chance to regenerate his mana. Struggling with pain, Yan Quan asks Jiang how he casts spells so quickly. Jiang Li, conjuring a fireball, admits he's not sure. He hurls the fireball at the trio, leaving them shocked and stripped of their clothes, which were burned. Laughing, Jiang Li remarks on the profitability of robbing after defeating the area boss, stuffing his bag with their belongings. Concerned about his sudden three-level increase after defeating the area boss, he contemplates changing his leveling spot for the next day. Turning back to the trio, Jiang humiliates them for failing to rob a newbie despite being iron tier players, calling it embarrassing. Arriving at Rose Town, Jiang Li pants from the exertion of walking. Exhausted from carrying his haul, he wishes for a spatial item to ease the burden. Making his way to the Golden Dragon Treasury, Jiang Li identifies it as the destination. A lady greets him, asking if she can help him with anything. Jiang dumps his loot on the table, stating he needs to sell them, as she asks him to wait a while. After a brief wait, Jiang Li sits at a nearby table, where the lady returns with an evaluation of his loot and says he will receive 972,000 flame dragon coins which rounds up to 1 million. Informed of the value, Jiang Li is stunned by the significant sum, contrasting it with his mother's modest monthly earnings, and pondering the disparity between professionals and ordinary people. Expressing satisfaction with the price, Jiang Li inquires about basic skill books, prompting the lady to offer her assistance. Genius girl Mo Qingqing of the Golden Academy recognizes Jiang Li, watching him from a balcony above, as an attendant comes to her and informs her that everything is ready. At the Golden Dragon Treasury Library, Jiang Li tells the sales lady he needs basic mage class skills and asks her to recommend some to him. The sales lady shows Jiang Li a number of books saying they are all beginner level sills what mage can learn and asks him to choose what he likes. Jiang Li looks at the price and they are all 600,000 each and he realizes the 1 million he got earlier isn't that much. He recalls he currently has fireball, arc lightning and ice arrow among which two are single target and the other an AoE attack and he decides he needs a control skill. He says he will take the slowdown technique which can apply a slowdown buff to the target. Realizing he needs to address the issue of his mana limit, he decides to use the remaining money to buy supplies. In the reception room, the Golden Academy's genius girl, Emo Qingqing, engages in conversation with a guy with glasses who informs her that there is indeed a black iron tear dungeon appearing in the Gale Plains, but the entrance is uncertain, suggesting they need to spend more time searching. Emo agrees, stating it's fine as long as the entrance is in the Gale Plains, and she commits to personally leading the search the next day thanking the man who responds with your welcome. Recalling seeing Jiang Li, Mo remembers hearing that his awakening ceremony had gone wrong, resulting in him becoming an ordinary mage. Puzzled by his presence, she wonders if she mistook him for someone else. As a butler approaches Bo and inquires about her thoughts, she is startled, blushing as she responds, it's nothing. The butler informs Bo that if she can clear the dungeon, her level will definitely skyrocket, and reaching Black Iron Tear won't be a problem. Reminding her that the trial competition is just a week away, he assures her she'll definitely surpass Miss Lee from the Lee family, causing Bo to blush again. Bo instructs the butler not to waste time and orders him to gather Mo Da and the others, stating she'll lead them into the dungeon herself when the time comes. At the Gale Plains, Jiang is hunting wolf-like monsters to level up. He electrocutes the wolves using his staff, having their health, thinking that the damage of his skills has increased with his level increase. Thinking about facing goblins again, he believes he can now one-shot them, even with arc lightning. Surprised by a wolf approaching from behind, Jiang quickly creates a shield despite being caught off guard. Muttering that the onslaught is endless, more wolves advance towards him. Swiftly moving forward, Jiang casts the arc lightning spell. Wolves dodge his lightning attack, advancing towards him. Jiang is surprised to see the wolves dodge his arc lightning attack. He casts another spell, causing the wolves to freeze in their tracks. Questioning if it's the max level slowdown technique, he remarks on its fast casting speed and trajectory, noting it can't be dodged and is typically used on a single target, deeming using it three times in a row extravagant. Raising his staff, he declares the need to dispatch other wolves before more arrive. Moments later, Jiang Li drinks a mana replenishment potion. Pleased he stocked up at the Golden Dragon Treasury, he notes today's monster grinding efficiency has increased, with the system showing his current level as 11. Peeking out from hiding, he ponders whether to confront the elite monster, a level 20 bloodline wolf. Peeking from behind a large rock, Jiang evaluates the bloodline wolf and her offspring, readying himself to launch a surprise attack. A burst of lightning crackles through the air, striking the wolves with a sudden jolt. Jiang propels himself towards the mother wolf, staff in one hand and the fireball spell ready in the other. Following the enormous explosion, the system notifies Jiang of a successful strike on a vulnerable point, resulting in a critical hit. With all the other wolves slain, only the largest remains standing, 
prompting Jiang to declare a one-on-one -on -one duel. The wolf opens its enormous, terrifying mouth and howls, poised to lunge at Jiang. Jiang raises his fist, commanding the wolf to behave, as he casts the slowdown technique upon it. The wolf, its teeth and sharp claws inches away from Jiang, gets halted mid-charge. Jiang concedes his uncertainty about the gale wolf's weak spot but asserts one certainty. The wolf is hairy, vulnerable, and ablaze casting another fireball spell. Jiang watches as the wolf whimpers, anticipating the impending burn. In a thunderous explosion akin to before, the fireball collides with the wolf, and Jiang is swiftly notified by the system of a critical hit on a vulnerable spot. With the wolf finally defeated, the system displays that Jiang has leveled up by two levels, reaching level 13. The system also details the loot Jiang obtained, including a black iron dagger and a black iron ring, to which Jiang agrees, acknowledging their modest black iron grade quality but appreciating their compact size. Excitedly, he wonders how much he'll be able to sell them for. The ground suddenly starts trembling, catching Jiang by surprise as he wonders what could be causing it. His attention is seized by something in the distance, sparking a bit of curiosity. He realizes a horde of wolves is charging towards him, leaving him stunned. After facing an elite monster, he retrieves a mana potion, suggesting that there's no need for further aggression from the wolves. The wolves draw near as Jiang braces himself for an impending mauling. Yet, to his surprise, none of the wolves pay him any heed and rush past him. Astonished by his luck, Jiang concludes that the wolves weren't after him. He deduces that someone may have triggered the area boss, considering wolves are pack animals, and only the wolf king can summon such a large pack. Determined not to let anyone defeat the wolf king, he sprints after the other wolves, declaring the boss as his to tackle. At the entrance of a large cave, a trio comprising two men and a woman find themselves surrounded by a larger group, one member aiming an arrow at them. The leader of the trio, with short hair, confronts the larger group, questioning their heroism for exploiting the situation. An arrow suddenly strikes one of the trio, prompting a cry of pain. The injured member falls, and the archer asserts that they aren't heroes, admonishing the remaining two for their unpreparedness in facing the boss. He lays claim to their equipment, as well as the Bloodstripe King. The leader of the besieged group agrees to surrender both their equipment and the Bloodstripe Wolf King, pleading to be allowed to leave. With a sinister chuckle, the bow-wielding assailant reneges on the agreement, demanding the leader hand over the girl standing behind him. Sporting a malicious grin and licking his lips, he asserts his intent to indulge himself before releasing them. The leader, turning to the woman identified as Vivi, urges her not to blame him and emphasizes his desire to survive. As he reaches for her, Vivi vehemently protests, warning him to stay away. In a sudden turn of events, a burst of lightning emerges, electrocuting all the assailants. The leader of the assailants, visibly shaken, demands to know who dares to attack his group and sabotage their fortunes. Drawing his sword, he commands the attacker to reveal themselves. Emerging before them, his countenance ablaze with fury, Jiang questions their audacity to commit robbery even before nightfall, fireball poised and ready in his hand. Suddenly, one of the assailants sneaks up behind Jiang, sword poised to strike. Jiang swiftly turns, admonishing the assailant for the interruption and blasts him with a fireball. Terrified, the leader of the trio pleads for mercy and attempts to flee. Recognizing Jiang, Vivi's eyes fill with tears as she asks if he's the one from earlier. The leader of the robbers rallies his remaining allies, acknowledging Jiang's strength and defeating his comrades with a single strike and warning against underestimating him. Bearing his teeth, he dismisses Jiang's strength, asserting that ultimately, he is just a mage. Commanding his cohorts to attack together and prevent Jiang from casting spells, he prepares for a coordinated assault. Summoning another fireball, Jiang expresses pity at their reckless eagerness to rush in. With another blast, he questions their apparent eagerness to meet their demise. The robber leader watches in concern as his comrades are scattered in all directions. Enraged, he refuses to accept the devastating impact of a mere mage's abilities. Dropping his weapons and falling to his knees, he begs for forgiveness, claiming it's all a misunderstanding. With a remorseful tone and pleading eyes, he implores Jiang to take Vivi and leave, revealing the location of the blood rune wolf king inside the cave. Jiang commands him to halt, using his staff as a makeshift bow and conjuring a crystal arrow, warning the robber that since he initiated the attack, he should be prepared to face retaliation. Jiang releases the crystal arrow, piercing through the robber's body as he coughs up blood. He warns of the repercussions from Blood Wolf mercenaries for Jiang's actions, cautioning that there will be consequences. Jiang sifts through his belongings with a smile, noting the enhancement of his mana from leveling up, allowing him to employ multiple skills seamlessly. Vivi redirects her attention to Jiang, expressing gratitude for his rescue. Blushing, she admits to underestimating his power and confesses her earlier concern for him. Rising with a warm smile, Jiang reassures her, stating they are even now as she had also saved his life before. Advancing toward the cave, Jiang invites Vivi to accompany him in facing the boss. Consuming a mana potion to replenish his energy, Jiang strides towards the cave with Vivi by his side, 
impressed by his defeat of the robbers and his readiness to confront the boss. Observing Zhang's youthful appearance, Vivi wonders if he possesses a hidden, formidable class. The Blood Rune Wolf King, at level 25, slumbers peacefully inside the cave. Peering at the sleeping Wolf King from behind a rock, Vivi reveals her level 20 status and recent attainment of the Iron Rank, questioning whether just the two of them can defeat the king. Jiang responds that they won't know until they try, then boldly charges at the wolf king after launching a fireball. The fireball explodes upon the wolf king, creating the usual burst. Noticing the absence of a critical hit notification from the system, Jiang ponders if the wolf king is impervious to fire. Awakening, the wolf king's visage turns terrifying as he roars angrily, declaring the intruder's demise. Startled by the wolf king speaking their tongue, Jiang questions the boss's advanced intelligence. The Wolf King charges at Jiang, who deftly dodges aside, realizing the absence of magic resistance. Confident, Jiang casts the slowdown spell. The Wolf King leaps towards Jiang, jaws wide open, ready to bite. Jiang activates the shield spell just in time to protect himself. Jiang marvels as the king nearly shatters his shield, impressed by its remarkable agility despite the slowdown spell. Determined, Jiang summons the crystal arrow, ready to take action. Simultaneously, Vivi enhances Jiang's offensive power with her spell. Releasing the arrow, it's effortlessly dodged by the Wolf King, leaving Vivi shocked. With a smirk, Jiang anticipated the dodge and commands the arrow to launch a second attack. Striking the Wolf King this time, the arrow halves his health, resulting in a critical strike, as informed by the system. Jiang credits learning the technique from bosses like the Wolf King pinpointing the creature's vulnerability at its waist. The Wolf King grows even angrier, unleashing a howl. Vivi warns Jian of the Wolf King's berserk state. A swarm of smaller wolves emerges at the Wolf King's side. Jian recognizes the smaller wolves from earlier. Realizing the Wolf King's ability to summon lesser creatures, Jiang prepares for a tougher fight. Vivi advises caution and offers assistance by slowing down the smaller wolves and replenishing Jiang's mana. Jiang conjures another fireball, slamming it into the ground, annihilating several wolves and gaining experience points simultaneously. Jiang observes that the confined space of the cavern, coupled with summoning numerous minions, has reduced the Wolf King's agility. Calling out to the Wolf King, Jiang warns that if it uses that skill once more, he might spare its life temporarily. The Wolf King bares its teeth and summons more minions. Recognizing the opportune moment to strike, Jiang utilizes the fireball skill for the final time. A massive explosion ensues from his attack, and the system notifies Jiang that he has leveled up to level 14. 